All right. Thanks a lot for joining us again on TVC Breakfast. Now let's talk about uh, this uh, CNG drive of the federal government. Well, the compressed natural gas has been one of the natural gases which undergoes pressurization, remains clear, odorless and non-corrosive. It's also said to be cheaper and available in Nigeria. It's safer and more efficient than petrol or diesel and can fuel cars. At the official commissioning of vehicles at the CNG convention station in the, at the Nigerian Institute of Transport Technology in Abuja, the Minister of Transport, Salidu Alkali, said these vehicles are produced at a cost cutting and efficiency boosting measure for fuel. And the alternative is said to be economical, easily acceptable, and offering great environmental benefits. And that's what we'll be uh, considering at this leg of the program this morning. We bring in uh, who joins us from our Abuja Studios, the program director, presidential CNG initiative, Michael Uluwagbemi. Thank you uh, very much for joining us at this time. All right, so there's been so much talk about this um, you know, CNG initiative. It's said to be promising, and um, it's also been said that we have uh, this gas, which forms, uh, you know, which is the major component of the CNG uh, drive, the CNG breakthrough. It's said to be gas, which we have in ab abundant supply. Nigeria is said to rank about eighth or ninth uh, in the world in terms of high uh, quantities of gas. But tell us more about the potential and why the government is pushing uh, this uh, initiative. Thank you very much, Anna, and thank you. Good morning to your viewers, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, absolutely, Nigeria is a, a richly blessed country with gas. Uh, the largest gas reserves in Africa, uh, and uh, we're wasting quite a bit of that gas as the second uh, uh, largest or biggest flaring country in the world after Russia. Uh, so it is, it is true that Nigeria is a gas province that happens to have oil. Uh, everywhere in Nigeria is gas, and uh, we should be utilizing this gas, this god given resource for uh, the industrialization of our country and leverage it to uh, give us an economic advantage, a competitive advantage among nations. Uh, countries that are blessed with abundant energy resource uh, leverage that to ensure that they attract industries, they create jobs, they export to other countries. And that is what Nigeria ought to have been doing and what the President Bola Ahmed Chinubu through his uh, uh, renewable agenda is hoping to achieve. Uh, leveraging and focusing on the uh, transportation sector. It is true, the reality is about 16% of the CPI, or the inflation index, is constituted by transportation. Uh, most households spend about 16 to 18% of their income on transport. Uh, transport, as a result, affects the price of everything. Everything from your foodstuff to your energy to um, household materials. So we believe very strongly that if we're able to reduce the rate of inflation uh, with respect to uh, energy that fuels transportation, it will go a long way to impact the lives of ordinary Nigerians. And that is the reason why the president has commissioned the uh, Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative to reduce in the long term uh, the inflation that's associated with transportation and transportation costs. It's also cleaner, it's safer, and it's more reliable. Uh, so, therefore, Nigeria is focused, and the president is through the PCNGI, uh, to transition Nigeria from the current dependence on PMS and diesel to, to gas, leveraging CNG, to power the transportation sector. Uh, this is the reason why the president has, uh, has uh, empaneled the, uh, the initiative and the reason why we've been working very assiduously to achieve the targets that he has set for us. Well, while Nigerians are happy with this initiative, a lot of, my still, a lot of Nigerians are still you know, apprehensive about the uh, initiative as regards the fact that, you know, the, um, how intricate it is to handle uh, gas, especially, you know, the LPG and all of that, the experience they've got. So they felt they're worried about the safety. If we are using petrol, um, mm -hmm. we're not sure of how safe it's always been because anytime it, it goes, it's very, very flammable. So they are not worried about gas because gas is not something to be compared with, you know, the petroleum because that's, 
you know, explodes, you know, boom, and, and, and everywhere is aflame. So what would you say regarding the, um, the, the safety and the fear people, the apprehension people are having towards accepting this innovation? Yes, I, first, of, first of all, I want to say that most of those fears are unfounded. The word gas is used uh, very widely for, every, for a lot of things. I mean, gas represents a state. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a, a specific uh, material. So you, the nitrogen and hydrogen and various gases exist, um, not just uh, CNG. But compressed natural gas specifically is actually the safest uh, form of fueling your vehicle with an hydrocarbon. Uh, with a very high flash point uh, compared to petrol, uh, and also the, the reality is that it is stored uh, safely in pressurized uh, bulletproof container. And even when it is let out, it quickly disappears because it is natural gas. It is not the same thing as uh, petroleum gas, which is what you're used to uh, when it relates to cooking gas. Uh, it is natural gas. So there's a difference between the gas that you're using in your home, which people do associate with explosion, and what you'll be using to fuel your vehicle with respect to CNG. So these fears, of course, are founded, but we need to educate our people. We need to let them understand this. Uh, CNG is stored at uh, uh, high pressure in pressurized container. Uh, and that container itself is about 10 millimeter thick. It's bulletproof. It's uh, subjected to a routine test. And uh, uh, it is a, uh, as soon if there's any let out of that uh, natural gas, it quickly dissipates such that it never even ignites, and even the flashpoint uh, for its ignition is quite high. So it's been used widely across the world. About 10% of passengers around the world today are ferried uh, by natural gas. Countries like uh, uh, Iran and Indra, India and China have, have been transitioning. Egypt, uh, Italy, I mean, many other countries. Japan has been using this natural gas for the longest time. And guess what? The Japan and India imports their gas from Nigeria. So it makes no sense that we export our gas to fuel transportation in Japan and in India to provide them a low cost uh, of transportation, which thereby gives them competitive advantage to compete against us uh, internationally and globally. But we, do, we, we take that same gas and we flare it and we waste it. So the reality is that this CNG is safe, CNG is reliable, it's available. Let us note that because it's a resource that we actually produce, it suddenly disconnects uh, Nigeria's uh, uh, transportation costs that, that Nigerians pay uh, and the full cost they pay at the pump from international politics. So that's also very good because it reduces the rate of inflation of transportation over a long period of time. Well, well, experts have also, you know, posited that tied to the expectation that this will be a smooth sale for the federal government and indeed the citizenry is a need for uh, more public awareness of this um, drive of the federal government. And we understand that there are about C uh, seven CNG conversion centers in the country at the moment. Help us understand, you know, what you're driving at as a, a, a key participant in, in this project, the project program director, I should say. Uh, help us understand, you know, what these um, uh, conversion centers are set to achieve and what next. Thank you very much. Yes, it is true that uh, there's a need for us to continually uh, raise the level of awareness for, uh, of our citizens about this uh, government initiative but more importantly about this initiative to transition Nigeria. Because it's not just about the government. The government will do its part. The private sector will do more uh, uh, with respect to this. The value chain of compressed natural gas is quite long, all the way from uh, uh, natural gas supply uh, at the wellhead to the discharge to the nozzle of your vehicle. And there's a lot of opportunities for Nigerians to participate along that value chain, business opportunities, entrepreneurial opportunities, which we are fully aware that Nigerians are already taking advantage of. For example, you mentioned that previously up until now, I think up until the launch of this initiative, there were only seven uh, convention centers. I'm glad to announce that within a month of the program, that has doubled. We now have 14. Mm -hmm. And we expect that continually we're going, going to continue to double that, not because the government is the one establishing this convention center, well, because Nigerian entrepreneurs are taking advantage of the opportunity to, come to, to say, establish these centers to support the government uh, initiative uh, to transition Nigeria uh, from PMSD to, to, to CNG. Uh, to be clear, why do we need conversion centers? Nigeria already have 
about uh, uh, 40, depending on who you are, uh, which data you're looking at, about 14 to 20 million vehicles on the road that are mostly 99.99% of them are powered by diesel or PMS. Uh, only less than 5,000 or less than 7,000 of them are running on CNG. But these vehicles can be converted with less than 500,000 air to run on CNG. And the PMS and diesel, they're already running at. The opportunity is there. Uh, with 7 million of these vehicles being commercial vehicles, just imagine if your commercial vehicle is not just running on PMS and diesel, but also can run on much cheaper CNG. Uh, it allows, number one, flexibility, because uh, if you're in an area where you cannot find CNG, it's automatically and seamlessly switches to, CMS, uh, to PMS and diesel. Um, however, whenever you find CNG, it's of course much better to run on CNG and with just a push of the button in the converted vehicle, your vehicle runs seamlessly. Your vehicle runs better because it is no longer using dirty foil. Uh, the number of times that you'll be going for maintenance will reduce and the cost of maintenance will also fall down, uh, uh, reduce dramatically. The reality also is the cost of fueling is also going to be about uh, less than 40%, 40 to 50% less than what you're spending. Uh, uh, utilizing uh, using PMS and of course much cheaper using assuming you're using diesel so the benefits to accrue to the country if we're able to convert the already existing fleet of vehicles which I say is about 14 to 20 million uh, which 7 million of them are commercial vehicles that transport the vast majority of the population in terms of uh, the, the mass transportation and ride shares and the Ubers and and even in addition to this the KK just imagine the uh, opportunity for Nigerians to then be able to benefit from a lower cost of transportation. So that is there, and because the adoption cost also falls on dramatically. Instead of you having to spend millions of Naira to buy a new CNG vehicle, you can take your existing vehicle for less than half a million Naira, which, by the way, you will gain very back quickly, uh, assuming uh, you are doing considerable among, amount of distance, uh, uh, driving every week. Uh, it takes maybe about three maximum of six months to recover that uh, money that you use to convert. So that is the opportunity here for us to convert the existing fleet, which is much cheaper, which is also allows us to be able to have a flexible mode of fueling in the short to medium term before the nation fully converts and has infrastructure all around the country to be able to support CNG, pure CNG. Uh, that's the opportunity when it comes to conversion. And that's the reason why the government is encouraging through this initiative, the setting up of conversion centers as our target is to have a thousand of them by 2027 that would have been able to convert one million vehicles across the country. This is our target we've set for ourselves, and we're working with our private sector partners in order to achieve this goal. Uh, uh, apologies, uh, you know, just to follow up to that question, help us clarify uh, the start of this exercise for Nigerians to take advantage and bring in their vehicles to convert uh, to the CNG mode. Uh, pardon me, can you repeat that question? Yes, yeah, so, so when is the start date for Nigerians to take advantage of, um, you know, this to come convert their vehicles to the CNG mode? Help us clarify uh, that angle. Yes, I mean, like I said, there's already 14 centers, as at last can even probably increase in every day because um, additional centers have been launched. Um, you can schedule, um, and you could have been scheduling for the last two, three, four years since these centers have been running. A lot of Nigerians are already benefiting from using CNG. Of course, our work here, the initiative is to popularize it, is to roll it out national, uh, uh, nationally, is to also support and uh, facilitate, facilitate investment into the sector, uh, which allows the infrastructure, including these conversion workshops and the refueling stations to, to spring up across the country to support the fleet that we've incentivized by the program. And of course, to also set up and facilitate a regulatory framework to ensure that we have zero incidents in the sector. So as it is today, uh, it's not as if there's one specific day that, oh, everybody suddenly can start converting. Uh, conversion workshops are already springing up across the country, across the neighborhood, where you can find it. We will very soon be launching the MyCNG app that will show you where you can actually convert your vehicle closest to you. And also, as we add new partners on the network, we'll also be adding them to the app. So this is what we are rolling out. And uh, as I said, it's, it's already going on. Folks are already registering and leveraging as, and, and getting their cars converted. And, uh, and, and, and the good news is that this is already available in some major cities in Nigeria. But our work is to make sure that it's national, supported, and, uh, uh, and partnering with the private sector. And that is what we are, we are up to at the PCNGI.
You've probably answered my question as regards uh, those who will be uh, helping in this conversion and, dis uh, and uh, dispensing uh, the, the CNG, making it sure that making sure that it goes, goes round among Nigerians. But then I'm still big on the, the safety issue because if you look at recently, uh, we were talking about the counterfeiting of products, medicine and all of that. Uh, that story, that news is rife now uh, as regards those who are counterfeiting products. And we also know about adulterated petroleum um, where you know people mixing petroleum and it's not in its pristine form. Are you worried about the quality control? What, what are the things that you feel the government is putting in place to ensure that the quality control is there to mitigate against adulteration? And those who will be selling, um, you said the, 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 the gas cylinder will be, uh, is, is definitely bulletproof. Is definitely bulletproof. So are you worried about those who will be selling inferior, uh, inferior products regarding ensuring that CNG uh, proliferates the, the markets in Nigeria? Thank you very much. Wonderful question. Um, yes, uh, as, as a government, we want to ensure zero incidents in the sector. Mm. Uh, safety is our watchword, and to ensure pure safety and reliability of what is being done in the sector. It's the reason why we've been working in the last couple of months to set up the regulatory framework. You know, I remember that I told you our mandate is, is, is trial. One, to incentivize. Secondly, that's to incentivize the adoption. Secondly, is to facilitate investment uh, into the sector. And lastly, is to set up the regulatory framework uh, to ensure this sector is properly p policed. Yes, so we are uh, not just worried, we are being, taking proactive steps to ensure that the proper regulatory framework uh, is set up for the sector. The, the, we we convene an interagency uh, committee uh, that is already working on very clear uh, guidelines and regulation uh, to be issued by the Standards Organization of Nigeria. That, uh, committee was launched about a couple of weeks ago, if, you, if you're watching the news. And uh, more than 22 agencies working with stakeholders, the Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers, uh, uh, RTN and NATO, and all the uh, Ministry of Transport, and all the, all the folks around the table, including your FRSE, Federal Road Safety Commission, uh, the Nigerian Auto Development and Design Council, NMPDRA that works on the hydrocarbon aspect of it to ensure the safety and hand of the handling of hydrocarbon and the discharge of it at the NMPDRA licensed refueling stations that will be discharging the CNG and to ensure that the product, like you said, is, not, is, is the product. I mean, uh, that you are not calling LPG CNG and vice versa and to ensure that you are using uh, 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 what you say you are using and even to ensure the safety of the conversion process because let's remember that when the vehicle is already inspected approved for sale as from the oem uh the moment you convert them you also need to make sure that they are re-inspected and they are properly converted uh up to standard and so we are setting up that process and we're ensuring also that the equipment especially uh, 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 especially the conversion kits also meets international standard and safety standard, as well as the cylinders. You mentioned about the cylinders to make sure they are actually bulletproof, but even beyond that is to make sure that you're using the right cylinder. You're not using LPG cylinder or welded cylinder for CNG. CNG cylinders are uh, uh, extruded cylinders, uh, very thick, and also, uh, also have a different level of inspection requirements for use. And so this is something that uh, we take very seriously and we are working on. All right. Uh, well, it's, it's also a follow-up now, talking about the need to also ensure critical infrastructure to enable this uh, drive are essentially achieved because, you know, for some observers, uh, keen observers actually, uh, that has been one of the reasons why uh, the main potential of, uh, you know, our gas imputes in Nigeria have not been uh, been utilized over the years. But, you know, this is this is fine in, in print and, you know, so far so good, you would say. But in terms of, you know, the enabling infrastructure to see this through uh, on a national scale as is intended, you know, help us to also understand, you know, what how you are seeking to achieve uh, this uh, aim. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, earlier this week, uh, we launched uh, uh, with our, uh, in Abuja here on, on Tuesday, we had uh, an all-day engaging session with the private sector. And the reason is very obvious. Uh, we'll need investment of up to a trillion naira in the sector in the next five years. Uh, all of that cannot come from government. Uh, if we are going to meet the needs of a million vehicles and we are going to 
also ensure that we provide the gas that they need, which will be uh, in, the, in the upward of over 100 mm scoff per day. Uh, we need the private sector to invest uh, not just in gas fines and gas supplies. We also need the private sector to invest in the infrastructure, the infrastructure of gas processing, the infrastructure of uh, last mile uh, uh, pipe gas, the infrastructure of um, uh, uh, mini LNG plants that should be located at least one in every state in Nigeria, the infrastructure of uh, regasification plants that take that further into the interlands, the infrastructure of CNG trucking, the infrastructure of refueling stations, the infrastructure of conversion workshops, even the infrastructure of manufacturing the conversion kits and the cylinders. A lot of these things need to be domesticated and there's a, because there's a huge opportunity here to serve Nigeria's uh, CNG sector and there's a huge opportunity for our uh, for the private sector to invest. We believe strongly that the private sector will be reliable partners in this process uh, to bridge the infrastructure gap that exists. We are also doing that, of course, by rolling out incentives. The president has already announced that there is a, uh, there's, there's a waiver, a duty waiver, a uh, custom duty waiver on all CNG uh, uh, equipment and, uh, and, uh, and vehicles, as the case may be. That is one. There's also a VAT exemption that has already been announced by the chairman of the PCNGI that also happens to be the uh, executive chairman of the FRS, courtesy of the president of presidential approval. All of these are important incentives for investors and even more will be rolling out to ensure Very that we quickly. can bridge this crucial and critical infrastructure gap to deliver CNG to all Nigerians. Very quickly, let me quickly um, squeeze in this question. Um, yeah, you mentioned the federal government making sure that so many cars are you know, captured in this initiative. Mm. Uh, I remember sometime in October, we've got somebody from the NNPC who said that it's going to cost about 350,000 Naira to convert your vehicle. Talk to us about how much it's going to cost uh, and how much the how many cars the federal government is looking to help in? I think it's about five hundred uh, thousand. I'm not sure of the figure because even in Lagos alone, there are five million vehicles, uh, more than five million vehicles, and Nigeria has about eleven point eight million or thereabouts as at 2023 data. Uh, how much does it cost? Very quickly. Yes, uh, the range, the, the cost, the actual cost of conversion depends on the engine size uh, and the type of vehicle that you are, you're conversing. Uh, yes, so the range will be between 250 to about um, half a million naira, depending on the uh, type of vehicle you're converting. Uh, but uh, with, with respect to that cost, like I already mentioned before, and I will say it again, if you're saving about 50%, something, even, it can be less than 30% of that of fueling cost, you'll make that money back in, in about three to six months. So it's, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer really to convert because the vehicle is just thereafter. You can continue to... Uh, you continue to fuel it flexibly, and uh, your maintenance of that vehicle will also reduce drastically since you're going to be utilizing a cleaner form of fuel uh, for, for that vehicle. So I think in the long run, it is of immense benefit to all Nigerians, uh, regardless of the cost. Now, in terms of what the government is going to do to help that, about 55,000 conversion kits are uh, being ordered under the palliative program. Uh, by the, uh, with the PCNGI helping to deploy and to distribute those. Uh, the terms of deployment is going to be rolled out very soon that we enable Nigerians to understand the incentives that is going to be associated with that. It, is not, it's not, it doesn't mean that it's going to be free, but it's going to be, by and large, the goal is going to be to drive down the cost of adoption as much as possible for these 55,000 right. vehicles that will be targeted at the mass transit sector. Again, the focus of the president is to ensure that the, that the, that, that the common right. man, those people who are using the, 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 the mass transit fleets that are committing from home out to work every day, benefits directly from the CNG initiative. Right. And this is the goal of this program. Uh, we will leave or rest this conversation at this point. Their program director, Presidential CNG Initiative, Michael Olu Agbemi, we say a big thank you uh, for these uh, explanations that you thank have you. made about uh, this initiative. And by the way, congratulations uh, on your new role. We hope that uh, you know this will indeed be a successful uh, project on your part and indeed every other stakeholder. Thanks again for joining us.